So today we are going to dive into AP and payment automation, balancing your GP checkbooks with ease and shipping with Starship. So thank you so much again for joining us and we are excited. So let's kick things off with Rhonda from Avid Exchange. And so Rhonda, thank you. oh, sorry, I was just going to do a little bio, <laughs> if you don't mind. No, please, go ahead. Yeah, give her a big introduction. So Rhonda is the Principal Solutions Consultant for Avid Exchange, and she's an experienced accounts payable and payments leader specializing in helping companies streamline their AP processes and create efficiencies through automation and best practices. With more than 25 years of experience in the AP industry and seven plus years with Avid Exchange, Rhonda is considered a subject matter expert and enjoys sharing best practices with others regarding AP to help them manage day-to-day -day challenges. And Rhonda, before we kick things off, I just want to launch that poll that we have. So I'm going to do that right now. So everyone, if you could just take a few minutes to click on your answers for that or which ones pertain to you, that would be wonderful. And that's on the lightning bolt pan, uh, pane. If you don't see the poll question, make sure you click on that lightning bolt. All right, Rhonda, take it away. Thank you so much, Amy. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So today we're going to talk, um, we're going to begin the discussion talking about AP and AP automation and really some of the challenges that businesses still have to overcome next year. Um, I think with the pandemic last year and leading into this year that uh, we found that automation became on the forefront of a lot of uh, people's minds because they couldn't access their information. They were struggling not being able to make their uh, payments and, and not being able to receive their invoices. So um, really the status quo um, is not comfortable anymore. So most businesses who've waited on implementing new technologies said it's because you know they were comfortable. But again, that kind of is gone now with the pandemic. And 66% of companies said their biggest challenge in the first year of the pandemic was adjusting to a hybrid workforce. And we definitely heard that a lot, particularly with accounts payable, because that's not normally a team that you would think of as one that works remote. Um, so people were scrambling to make that adjustment. And many businesses are still receiving invoices and or making their payments via physical mail. So definitely some challenges that um, need to be addressed. So again, some current pain points for B2B payment management. We hear about regularly or fraud risks, um, particularly paper checks. They're definitely uh, prone to fraud, lack of visibility again into their information. Uh, those manual processes are typically inaccurate and can be error prone and they're manual and cumbersome, taking lots of time um, just to process those invoices and get those checks issued. So some of the conventional benefits of AP automation include um, less paper. So I know I remember from my days managing AP that um, before automation, there was paper everywhere. We actually had rows and rows of filing cabinets and even had to pay for offsite storage. Um, so, you know, high paper volume is commonly cited as one of the biggest pain points. And we do hear that on a regular basis and automation can definitely help you with that. Also cost savings. Um, AP is not a department that you would think of typically runs uh, inexpensively. Um, the cost to process a single invoice, though, can be reduced 60 to 70 percent after adopting an AP automation solution, and that's per Goldman Sachs. So really, uh, the cost savings plus the time savings, the efficiencies that you gain, um, really make a tremendous difference in your day-to-day uh, processing. AP professionals spend about 30% of their time collecting data and fielding inquiries related to invoices and payments. So just imagine uh, being able to reduce that or to eliminate it altogether really makes a big difference. 
and three differentiators that take AP automation above and beyond conventional benefits. First one being the seamless integration and accessibility. So obviously what good is an AP solution if it doesn't integrate with your accounting software? Um, Avid Exchange integrates with almost 200 different accounting softwares um, and different technology to leverage is you know, API integrations that talk with your accounting software. So invoices can be captured, uh, coded and approved inside of the uh, software, the automation software, but then sync back over or talk back to your accounting software. So it would end up looking and feeling as if you entered those invoices yourself right within your ERP. Also having those mobile capabilities that allow your team to produce from anywhere. So again, not worrying about having um, to go into the office to see your actual invoices or payments because you're able to access from anywhere. Um, artificial intelligence and machine learning to power uh, the inside and streamlined operations. So again, it's scraping that information from those invoices and improving OCR capabilities. So clearly that's a big one. Um, you know, again, we've seen uh, OCR come a long way in the last 15 to 20 years. Um, so that's been very encouraging. And we're seeing great results, uh, particularly with AI and machine learning. So also, of course, people are always thinking about their maximum ROI and scalability, being able to grow um, without having to add additional headcount. So multi-entity workflows and approval processes are something we run into a lot. We work with a lot of companies and industries that um, do operate with multi-entities, and that's absolutely fine. I mean, we can work with that. Um, and the software actually allows you to define those different workflows based on that criteria. So things like department or office or company or entity. Also, your security risk, uh, security and risk mitigation, having that centralized AP process provides clear visibility and makes it much easier to monitor for fraudulent activity. Um, again, some of the things that we hear on a regular basis when I talk to folks is that fraud is still top of mind, that most companies still experience some form of fraud. So to be able to do everything you can to mitigate it is huge. Also, the ability to earn incentive-based payment rebates. Uh, E-payment options like MasterCard and direct deposits can actually generate incentives and rebates back to your company. And user and other fees can add up as your company and finance department grows. So just think about uh, you know, how that's going to scale. And again, not being able to add that additional headcount as you grow is key. Also, the superior service and support, customers, buyers, suppliers alike, should all feel as if they have an ally. And what does that superior support look like? Well, we have specialized support groups that handle things like customer onboarding, uh, project management teams that work with you every step of the way, and then you have customer customer success teams and customer care teams that follow you uh, throughout your uh, time using Avid Exchange. And so they're always available to help. You'll also have multiple contact options. So again, it's all about being there for you when you need us, fast, efficient response time, and extensive supplier support. And so automated AP. Um, again, here are a few of the things that we've kind of talked about before, but really these are four of the top reasons that um, companies are considering automation and then eventually move to automation. And that's increasing efficiency and that flexibility, again, um, being able to cut time, significant time, particularly on those really laborious tasks where you're, you know, opening the mail or you're cutting paper checks, you can decrease all of that while still having complete visibility into all of your data. Also increasing that AP security. 
um, again, we know that those paper checks are really uh, prone to fraud. So reducing paper checks and going to e-payment options are extremely more secure than the checks. Saving your company money um, by, again, eliminating a lot of those manual tasks. And then I think this last one is one that not everyone thinks about. And that's actually improving your relationships with your suppliers. Um, with Avid Exchange, you'll gain a dedicated team that will assist your suppliers and ensure that they get paid on time and in their preferred payment method. I think a lot of folks think today, well, they're fine. Our vendors are fine receiving a paper check. And while that might be the case, when they're offered different options, particularly electronic payments, because they are so much quicker and secure, um, they jump on the idea. So it's really giving your suppliers that um, kind of flexibility that they never had before. So let's talk really quick about AP Automation with Avid Exchange and how it works. And again, as I mentioned, you know, centralizing information, we can actually receive those invoices, uh, be it coming in uh, electronically or in the mail, paper invoices. So we can receive those, we can uh, help you with coding and get those invoices back to your accounting system so that they are available to be posted. Also, we're able to help you with PO matching, uh, two and three way match with uh, automatic flipping. We can also automate flexible um, online invoice approval process. So again, you're losing um, no, you know, zero of your control. You still have all of your control, but now you're able to do it in an electronic format. So you've got complete control and all the visibility that you need. And then on the payment side, you can have access into your payments every step of the way. So you'll know when they're created, when they've cleared, you'll have access to um, all of your proof of payment. And then again, we're going to integrate all of that information back to your accounting system. Um, so it really is a win-win situation. And just a quick look at what it looks like for us, as you can see, here is your invoice image. Again, you have complete visibility and it doesn't matter if it's one page or a hundred pages, you'll have all of that information. And then over here is where we're capturing that header information and you're still in control over coding those invoices and making sure that they're being applied correctly. But even with that, we can help you. With those recurring type invoices, we're able to, to turn on um, smart coding and the system will automatically know how uh, to code an invoice based on how it was coded previously. So really lots of options um, as far as AP automation and I encourage you to take a look into it. So thank you very much. And now I will transition it over to Blue Moon. Thank you so much, Rhonda. So yes, I think, uh, if, you know, as you're thinking about 2022 and the year of process improvement, this is definitely should be on everybody's list looking at ways to automate AP because we always want to get paid faster. <laughs> I would think, right? Oh, yes. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> the vendors are very happy when they're paid on time. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. All right. With that, I am going to launch our next poll. So we will do that right now. Make sure you all click on the lightning bolts and feel free to respond. And we are going to introduce David from Blue Moon. David has been working in the technology industry for 20 plus years as a product support and SQA at Blue Moon Industries. David works with clients to troubleshoot any issues they're experiencing with Blue Moon products. David's inquisitive nature makes him a natural at drilling down to problems quickly as well as process improvement. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, well, a little bit about uh, as well, Blue Moon, we're Microsoft Gold certified ISV. We've been developing, developing products for GP since 1994. And well, recently acquired the Encore add-on solutions for GP and me along with it. Uh, they have over 1,000 customers using our products and 
expanding some of the solutions for Business Central, FNO, and Acumatica. <coughs> now, one of the things, uh, one of the main products that we have is uh, the ability to assist people with balancing your checkbooks. Uh, uh, one of the things, oh, balancing your checkbook for additional fees and your bank statement that do not exist in GPs, such as uh, service fees, NS fees, credit card fees, banking fees. Uh, that's actually part of the account reconciler product. Uh, with the account reconciler, it's going to give you the ability to do a true GL reconciliation of your checkbook at the GL level versus we're uh, reconciling at the checkbook level in GP Bankrec. So anything that is going to hit the GL account will be pulled into the account reconciler window and it'll allow you to will allow you to balance your checkbook and reconcile it. Uh, one of the options that we showed in the earlier slide is the GL adjustment section. Uh, basically what that does is it gives you the ability, so if you had the need while reconciling your checkbook uh, to create your adjustments for anything that's on your bank statement that doesn't exist in GP, such as your miscellaneous fees and such forth, you can actually create the general ledger entry direct from account reconciler. And you actually have some additional rules on how those are going to be grouped. So for the GL adjustment entry, if you zoom into it from account reconciler, I can actually create my general ledger, the general ledger side uh, directly. It could be a single GL. There's multiple groupings on it. Uh, for you can either have individuals for same for anything that's in the any row could be an individual row or you can group it by same date or reference as well so by date and reference the interesting point about this uh, compared to our other competitors is once you post the the actual gl from account reconciler it will automatically get pulled into the account reconciler window and automatically be flagged as cleared to balance your checkbook immediately. You don't have to go back and actually manually clear those GLs. They automatically get cleared for you by the system. Now for the GL adjustments, uh, we actually have the ability that you could predefine your offset accounts for the GL adjustments. So you don't have to actually go into general ledger entry and create both sides of the, the GL. You could predefine it by a partial matching or uh, an exact matching, whether it be case sensitive or case insensitive. And that would basically be by using the reference field that is you're indicating in the window. So if I were to create one called NSF, if I type the NSF on the line in the GL adjustments, it would automatically default the offset account for me. Now with the bank reconciliation tools, there is an additional uh, add-on. It is called the auto reconciler. For the auto reconciler, it's going to actually give you the ability to read your bank statement and pull in the information to be able to match your transactions during your reconciliation. The auto reconciler will work with GP Bank Rec, but it'll also work with the Blue Moon account reconciler. So if you you could have auto reconciler on its own and just work with GP Bank Rec, or you can have it with account reconciler. The file types that are it allows you to read is common delimited, fixed length, TDBI, CIBC, OSC, and BAI2. Uh, the advantage of a BAI file with your bank statement is if you have multiple checkbooks from the same bank, 
they could all be on a single BAI file and Auto Reconciler will actually work with that. You, you have the ability to define per checkbook what the account number is. So when it reads the, the single BAI file, it knows which checkbook to use. The one, how it works is basically once you read the file, if you do your matching, it will actually match the transactions to your reconciliation method. And whether it be GP Bankrec or Account Reconciler, and it would clear the transactions and give you a report on what it cleared and what it didn't clear, what actually was already previously cleared in the actual reconciliation tool. And anything, that was not cleared, it's also going to give you the ability to do that GL adjustment from Account Reconciler if you're using Account Reconciler. It will actually move everything to a new import window that you can pick and choose if you want to import those ones manually. The other option is with those ones, uh, if they were not in for the same period, if you needed to manually clear them through the reconciliation tool, you can use that as a working window as well to manually clear the transactions. So this is the unmatched window. So when used together with the count reconciler, it's going to give you a nice smooth transition to create those bank, those additional fees that exist on your banking statement that don't exist in GP. And it would automatically utilize the default offset account if you set up your offset account maintenance properly. So when it pulls in to the GL adjustments window, if I were to select the transaction, which one I want to import, it would automatically default the offset account for you. And then you can do your creation process. The other product I want to talk about is an advanced smart list. It's a really useful, easy to use tool. It, it sits inside GP smart list objects. It's relatively inexpensive and it'll work on any smart list that you may have in your environment, whether it be uh, one that's the core GP smart list objects or ones that you've created either using smart list designer or smart list builder. What it does is it gives you the ability to have that Excel type functionality for grouping and footing summers, summary inside the smart list window. So it makes it nice and easy to do your reporting inside smart list and I could do my groupings. And when I export to Excel, it will keep those groupings on the Excel up export. It does have some additional options uh, that are available. You can, that aren't available inside GP Smart List. With GP Smart List, you have uh, four search criteria. Now, with Advanced Smart List, I can filter the records down even fur further than what I can with GP Search. I have a filter editor that gives me the ability to filter unlimited number of filtering capabilities. Uh, on the actual smart list, uh, the smart list records that got pulled into the smart list window. I could do the filter, uh, multiple filters on the same column, which you cannot do in GP search. It also has, we added uh, recently a new quick filter. Instead of using the filter editor to manually create it, I could do a quick filter on the actual column, which is available in the window. With the export to Excel, it has uh, two Excel export options, one with currency symbol, one without. Depending upon your, your needs, you can choose either. It would have, it would actually export it to Excel either with or without the currency symbol. Uh, that was added because some clients we've noticed that are using these files uh, as a CSV import. And when you're doing it as a CSV import, you got to strip away the currency symbol. So it was added for the ability without currency symbol. 
the main difference between that and GP uh, export is the number of decimal places on the amount fields. With GP, the number of decimal places on any numeric field will automatically default to five decimal places. With our export, it'll default to the actual number of decimal places that are set for that currency. So if the currency is set to three, you will get three. If it's set to two, you will get two. You also have the ability to export as a PDF with the print viewer. Uh, the print view option allows me to zoom into the actual smart list. And if I needed to, I could add watermarks, a header, and then I can actually export it out as additional export options other than just Excel. I could do it as MHT, I could do a PDF, a rich text, I could do an image and export it that method. It also gives me the ability to do snapshots. So if I want to view my data from multiple smart list objects in the same window, I can with the snapshot feature. By selecting the originating smart list that I want to review, select the snapshot, it'll open up that smart list on the filtered criteria that I set, and then I can actually proceed to the next smart list object and do a comparison if I needed to. And I believe that is it. All right. Awesome. Thank you, David. So, if, you know, if you're when you're looking at 2022 as a year of process improvement and want an easier way to balance your checkbooks and GP and soup up your smart list, then this definitely will help with that. All right. We are going to start with our next presenter and first I'd like to just launch a poll so make sure you provide that information for us we do appreciate it and I'm going to now introduce Chris from V Technologies Chris as a seasoned sales executive with 20 years in the shipping software space Chris brings a wealth of knowledge to the Starship sales team and he specializes in business development software support mentoring and consulting. When he's not at work, he enjoys spending time with his family and live music. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate that. Sure. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today and spending a little bit of time this afternoon to learn a bit about uh, the three different solutions that we're presenting. Uh, first of all, my name is Chris Lettner. I'm a sales rep for V Technologies. Uh, as Amy mentioned, been doing this for about 20 years now. Uh, we've been working with uh, Dynamics GP for uh, well beyond that time. So we're going to talk about uh, GP and uh, Business Central integration uh, for Dynamics with our Starship product. A little bit about V Technologies first. The uh, company was initially founded in the late 80s, and uh, we developed uh, integration with uh, UPS first and uh, that eventually grew to other carriers over uh, the course of time Been working with um, the former Great Plains products since I believe 1992, going all the way back to Great Plains accounting on DOS and, and through the, uh, the Microsoft acquisition in the early 2000s. Uh, we also now have the uh, Business Central integration available as well as an out-of-the-box uh, add-on an app that you can download from app source and plug directly into uh, order entry and accounting uh, that's been available uh, since last year we have done work with uh, other dynamics uh, products as well we've done customizations with uh, the former ax and nav platforms uh, through channel partners and uh, we do also some custom sql integration in-house as well for folks that have uh, gp extender tables or you know other applications uh, within the um, within the, uh, the, the Dynamics ecosystem, such as SalesPad, WMS applications, EDI. We'll get into that a little bit later here in the presentation. Um, currently, there's over 10,000 uh, customers uh, in total that are using uh, both of our solutions uh, with uh, Dynamics as well as other ERPs. Uh, we maintain about a dozen of those in-house. Uh, we also do some custom work and uh, we have uh, distribution through a number of other uh, vertical solutions and uh, you know specialty ERP solutions available as well. So let's let's get into uh, 
what we're here for today and what we can do with uh, with dynamics. So just you know five key features we'll focus on. Uh, we have plug and play integration, as I mentioned. So basically um, out of the box uh, interface for shipping to plug in your Dynamics data, whether you're running Business Central or uh, Dynamics GP. Um, you know, special uh, code that needs to be developed. It's a plug and play interface that you can um, easily sign up for and uh, point at your data source. We can uh, integrate with multiple data sets, different uh, companies, um, all with you know one point of integration. Uh, there are hooks in there to map some additional data, do some value translations, bring over additional fields. Um, so if you have other um, data requirements outside of what we have out of the box, those can certainly be accommodated. Uh, but we have a quick and easy uh, ramp up period to be able to just connect it up to your data, uh, put in the credentials and start shipping uh, with the product right away. Starship offers you uh, multi-carrier options. Uh, so as I mentioned, we got started with uh, UPS initially uh, back in the late 80s. That has grown to include uh, a whole host of parcel carriers over the years, um, as well as LTL. We uh, developed that about uh, 12 years ago. We started building out freight integration. So now uh, basically you can have you know one application to manage all of your different methods of transportation uh, across all of your uh, different locations in your enterprise to a side-by-side -side comparison of all the rates and then have uh, Starship uh, either make the decision for you or you have all the information at your fingertips to, to make an informed decision about which way you want to route the product. Uh, Starship also offers um, the ability to have uh, best way shipping rules so you can have uh, a layer of logic around the carrier selection, the rate shopping, uh, we'll always look at the uh, ship method and the agent on the ERP side translate that as the default option that's selected, but uh, you have a, a layer of uh, logic and rules that can help automate that process, take the decision out of the hands of the operator if you want the system to enforce your business rules and choose a carrier based on the fastest, the cheapest method, um, or switch services uh, for whatever reason. Maybe you have better rates with, say, uh, FedEx ground in a certain area of the uh, country, or you want to automatically uh, ship things uh, priority mail if they're under a certain weight, things like that. Uh, we do give you access to discounted postage as well, uh, typically rates that are reserved for a commercial plus uh, shipper where you have a very high volume of mail that you're shipping. Uh, whether you ship one package or a thousand pieces in one day, we'll give you access to those discounted rates uh, just by virtue of the fact that you're using Starship. Uh, for your front office users, there's also a robust uh, dashboard set of tools. Um, right within the uh, BC environment, uh, we've given you this widget uh, that will list all of the tracking numbers, and you can click on the URL there, and it'll take the operator uh, from order entry directly uh, from the, the order or the invoice directly into the record in our dashboard. From there, you'll have a unified uh, view of all the history, uh, all the transactions against that, uh, that shipments if you're doing parcel shipments. Um, if you've consolidated multiple orders, the order number, the PO, uh, the uh, invoice number, the customer ID, any one of those ways are uh, available to cross-reference the shipment and look it up from our history. You can also have access to uh, widgets, which give you uh, some KPIs or metrics on your shipping performance, looking at on-time deliveries, trends in shipping, uh, what's the, the most common products that you're shipping, uh, where are you making money on certain items or potentially, you know, some losses uh, as well. So if you're giving away freights, uh, you're giving away discounts, you know, there'll be um, a cost analysis that you'll do a side by side comparison between your exposure on the freights and ultimately what you're charging your customers. So you can see your, your profit loss margin there. There's a number of uh, other reports, uh, crystal reports that are built into that dashboard as well. So really good for anyone in your front office that needs access to the historical view for tracking, for reporting, um, for on-time deliveries without actually bumping anybody off of the shipping system. And you can call that up easily directly from uh, the front office. Uh, Starship also gives you the ability to simplify a number of complex uh, types of shipping requirements. Uh, in particular, anything commodity-based where there may not be information in the inventory in BC or GP, 
Uh, Starship does keep a mirror database of all of the products that you ship, and we can fill in the gaps for what may not live in the item master. So uh, things like Schedule B codes, the, you know, your harmonized codes for clearing customs, um, the country of origin, uh, whether or not you have to file for an ITN number with the government in order to clear customs, and then also uh, things where you're shipping a uh, product on behalf of another business unit or entity. If you do fulfillment for uh, multiple groups or different brands, uh, if you're uh, a 3PL warehouse where you're doing fulfillment for other people's uh, products, um, we can have all of that automated, pulling that out of the customer card um, and the order header to automatically uh, switch the, the logo and the company information on the label, on the paperwork, and uh, make sure that all the branding is aligned with whoever it is that you're selling on behalf of. Uh, so if it's a blind shipment where they don't need to see your information, you see the other uh, company's information, that can all be automated and uh, completely uh, triggered <clears throat> dynamically from, uh, from either GP or BC. Also have the ability to automate the billing. So if you have customers that have preferences on uh, shipping on their own dime versus you assessing handling fees or discounts on the the cost of freight, uh, we can automate the uh, the billing preference, uh, whether it's collect or third party, or you're setting up different accounts to post manifest for. All of those can be automated through Starship as well, uh, making sure that the uh, the ch shipping charges go into the right buckets and you're not assessing freight on orders or invoices uh, where the customer prefers to use their own account. Uh, similar to international, uh, we can also automate uh, hazardous materials or freight shipments. Uh, so any commodity detail related to the dangerous goods, uh, Starship has the ability to produce the uh, paperwork that's required for shipping uh, the dangerous goods uh, to be compliant with the Department of Transportation, uh, all the proper labeling and paperwork that needs to go with those shipments. Uh, we store those properties within our tables and can link that to your uh, your Dynamics product. We also offer EDI integration with a number of uh, solutions in the Dynamics ecosystem. Uh, some names you may be familiar with like uh, True Commerce, Data Masons, SPS, a uh, number of other uh, EDI solutions as well. Uh, Starship has the ability to automate the process of uh, sending the ASNs to your trading partners by uh, linking uh, the ASN number, the serialized container ID can be generated as part of the shipping process. And we can hand off that data to your EDI solution. So you don't have to go into the EDI platform and marry up uh, the labels with the rest of the data um, and the rest of the tracking information. That'll all come printed, uh, collated through Starship. So you'll get your packing list, your shipping label, your 128 label, any other documents that the trading partner may require all collated and uh, printed out in the same sequence as the rest of your shipping documents. So you can easily, you know, affix those to the containers, uh, whether they be boxes or pallets, and then uh, make sure that uh, you're not getting any chargebacks from your trading partners. We'll also do a handshake with your EDI solution to make sure that all of the ASM data is populated on their side and test that whole process through from receiving the PO to fulfillment, shipping, and then eventually um, automating that ASM to go out the door so the 856 is triggered automatically. Uh, finally, we have the uh, uh, last option here, managing delivery expectations. What that can do is you know, basically proactively notify your customers uh, so they know exactly at what stage the shipment is in and the life cycle of the order being fulfilled. Uh, as soon as uh, you press save in Starship, you can have emails that are generated uh, with uh, logos and branding, also any copies of any documents or labels that you want to generate, those can be uh, automatically attached to the customer facing emails that go out and notify them that the, the order has been shipped, here's your tracking number, here's any other additional detail, a copy of a packing list, a bill of lading, export docs, hazmat, whatever paperwork needs to go with that, uh, that can seamlessly be uh, automated. And you can have different types of uh, messaging in the body of the, the uh, mess, uh, the emails as well. So uh, if you're doing, uh, you know, similar to the paperwork, if you're doing blind shipments or drop shipments, you have different uh, you know, business units that you're shipping on behalf of, we can cater the, uh, the email messaging 
uh, with you know, multiple iterations of the same type of documents to so make sure that uh, you're, you're putting uh, the right information in front of the right folks. All that can be uh, done to also drive some repeat business as well. So we can put any kind of marketing um, messaging that you want in there. There can be attachments with a catalog or promotional material, a piece of literature, a warranty, any information that you want to share with the customer, including links back into your uh, your site, coupon codes, promos, any of that type of information can be embedded within the uh, the emails that are going out with the tracking information and the rest of the shipping data. So hopefully that cuts down on the number of um, inbound customer calls that you're receiving. Of course, you'll have information um, on the ERP side as to the status of the shipment. Um, it'll be in our dashboard as well. But if you're you know, reaching out to the customer as soon as you're fulfilling the order, hopefully that helps drive the repeat business and cuts down on the number of calls that you're dealing with. All right, just a couple more slides. Uh, here we're looking at a uh, number of names that you may recognize. Uh, this is a snapshot of the different types of carriers that are available through the Starship platform. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, parcel carriers as well as freight and LTL. Uh, so you'll see a, a number of carriers here that are national carriers, uh, as well as some of the, the larger regional carriers. There's about uh, 20 different options available for LTL. We've also um, expanded our relationships with third-party logistics companies. Uh, so we now offer um, freight quotes uh, through CH Robinson. So we can get rates for both of those three PLs, as well as Worldwide Express. Uh, Worldwide Express are also bringing on uh, their sister company, Unishippers, uh, shortly. So uh, that, that list is always expanding and evolving. Uh, we've also uh, increased the number of other uh, smaller regional carriers and other 3PLs that we can onboard in Starship through the FreightView platform. FreightView is also owned by CH Robinson, and they can accommodate uh, a number of other third-party logistics companies' rates, as well as about 75 different uh, trucking companies. So some of the names that you recognize here, but there are also a number of smaller regional carriers that could also be accommodated. So. Just because you don't see the name of the carrier here, it doesn't mean that we uh, don't have an option to help automate the, the rating and tendering for those carriers. Uh, you also have uh, a few new names here as well. We've uh, pushed into Canada, so we've expanded our footprint into uh, the rest of North America. and We've opened up things to our neighbors in the north. And you now have uh, automation for UPS and FedEx directly through the carrier's web services if you are located in Canada either you know uh, in intra canada or outbound from canada anywhere else in the world where the carriers will service uh, we've also uh, added some additional canadian carriers through our integration with easy post uh, we now have support for the uh, post office in canada or canada post and then some uh, other parcel carriers like canpar and purolator again if there's names here that you don't see that does not mean that uh, we can't cover your carriers. Uh, so we have the TMS available. We also have the bill of lading option available. And we're always looking for feedback from our customers and prospects on which services they want to see incorporated into Starship. So uh, if you don't see the name here, feel free to reach out to either myself or your account manager, and we'd be happy to discuss with you how we could get those carriers into the system. And we also have our e-commerce integrations here um, for that. Uh, Starship has uh, you know, basically started with the big ones, eBay and um, Amazon, and we've been slowly you know, chipping away at this list over the years. I think we have about a dozen different options that are available now for both marketplaces and for shopping carts. Uh, with e-commerce, Starship can work in two different ways. Uh, you have the ability to uh, ship directly against your marketplace or cart transactions. So that would work the, the, in the same fashion as Dynamics, where uh, you come to the Starship terminal and you're able to enter or scan um, one of your cart transactions and uh, we'll interact with the e-commerce uh, database in the same way that we, as we do on the ERP side. Probably more commonly, we're um, supporting e-commerce as an extension to the ERP. So there's typically a bridge between the marketplace or the 
uh, cart that takes all those e-commerce transactions and puts them into Dynamics. And that's kind of where Starship takes over by mapping some data. Uh, typically, we can get the, uh, the e-commerce transaction number out of the customer PO field on the order header or some, you know, some other user-defined field. We map that into Starship. And as long as we can uh, set up the credentials for the, uh, the e-commerce solution that you're using, Starship can hit the API, the web service for whichever one of these, uh, these platforms you're using. And we can update the shipping status over on the e-commerce side as well. So that you know, basically nudges things uh, forward on the e-commerce side, makes all of the uh, shipping detail, the freight, the tracking, the status of the shipments, um, marking it as fulfilled over on the cart side. So, you know, if you're driving traffic back to your website for customers to see the status there, um, or they're, you know, logging into Amazon, they'll be able to go to the portal and see all the information that you see on the ERP side and the order header with the notes and the freight and the tracking. And they can go there to, to find all the detail. They can also trigger um, the alerts, that whatever, you know, type of, uh, messaging you have set up on the e-commerce side to move it along to the next stage of the workflow and uh, keep everybody uh, up to date on the latest status of your shipment. I should mention, uh, we also do have some custom integration with uh, one of our partners here, Blue Moon, on the call. Um, we do integrate with their Freight Matrix product. Uh, they can call our API and give you dynamic rating inside of uh, sales order processing for GP. Uh, we also have done some work on their auto invoicing um, module. So uh, Starship has uh, some store procedures that it calls on the right back and uh, can you know help you automate that invoicing process. I think the, the basic idea with any of these solutions is uh, you know by spending a little bit of money on uh, an ISV solution, you're able to uh, kind of you know streamline the shipping, the fulfillment process, and get to your cash quicker. So the idea is you know. The sooner you're getting it out the door, the faster you're processing the shipments and able to send out invoices, the quicker you are to realize your revenue on those orders. And with that, I will pass things back to Amy and open the poll and do whatever else we need to do. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. This is great. You got it. So yes, I have one, let's just go to some Q&A. If you do have, again, any questions, feel free to put them in the little chat icon that you see to your right, and we will get to those now. I'll also launch another poll. So if you are needing help with any of these types of solutions that we talked about today, such as AP automation, reconciling your checkbook or shipping, or if you're just here to learn, thank you so much for joining us as well. We're excited that you're here and want to make